I got here in the 87, in 1987, and when I got here in 87, I came here as a plumber. I had a plumbing license and this place was booming. But shortly after that, my life would take a change. And what I had done, I had tested to become a police officer and I did well on a test and, and I ended up becoming a Franklin County deputy and I was a police officer right here. Now that would look good on the outward, but everything seems to look good on the outward. We're good at making things looking good on the outward, but I can tell you that behind in the back 40, my life was falling apart. So I was a church going guy. I came to church, I went to church on Sundays. I'd hit, I'd miss, I made sure I made it on Easter. So I knew the right things to say and I looked right and I wore the uniform and, and I had all that going for me, but my life was falling apart. I was trying to do everything I could. I started to referee high school and college baseball, high school and college basketball. And I was a busy, busy man, but through it all, I was destroying a family. I was destroying my life. All of a sudden I find myself in alcoholism. Then all of a sudden I find myself divorced, but still on the front end of it, you see me, you think things are going great. So this goes on for about 15, 16, 17, 18 years. And now I'm divorced and I'm going to run it up quickly. I'm divorced. I'm an alcoholic. And uh, now I'm out in the dating field and I'm dating a young lady and she has an addiction to meth, but I'm a fix it kind of guy. Aren't we fix it people? And I think I can fix her cause I'm a deputy sheriff, so I can fix you. Well, I was bro so broken, I was tore up from the floor up and beat up from the street up. And so here I go, I'm trying to fix her. What, what had happened was her addiction made her steal from me. And for one full year, and I found this after, I'll tell you how I found it out after, she was putting a little bit of meth in my coffee every morning. So as this went on, one Friday night, she asked me to try a line of meth. I thought, what would it hurt for one time? Well, what it hurt was I became addicted to meth. So now I'm a deputy sheriff addicted to meth. Well, those two don't fit together, do they? My life began to swirl out of control and I was broken. And all I could think about was the dope. Now, listen, as I, as I, my life swirled out of control, I lost my job. I was, I was told to resign in lieu of firing. Now I don't, I'm not a deputy anymore. Now I really dive into the darkness. God was trying to reach me. He would send people in 2001. I got cancer non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, and I walked out of that cancer after five chemo treatments, and I was done, and my doctor said, you'll die. And I looked up to heaven, and I said, God, you said you heal people. Heal me, and I'll believe in you. And to my amazement, as an unbeliever, God healed me. I went back in five months later, and Dr. Sierra said to me, I thought you were dead. You think that would change me? I had not hit my bottom yet. So I lost everything, and I had lost a home, a family, a retirement, uh, I had spent my whole retirement on uh, narcotics and now I get arrested and get booked into the same jail that I had booked thousands into. They put me in ISO, med ISO, because I couldn't be in population because people knew who I was. So now here I am at my bottom and I have nothing. I'm living in a Jeep in the Walmart parking lot and I'm walking through Walmart. Now let me give you the power of an invitation. I ran into a man in the Walmart and I was in that Walmart to steal something so I could take it back so I could buy more drugs. That's where I had fallen to. And all he did was invite me, invite me to a meeting. He preached a long sermon, but the power of an invitation, what's the worst I could have said to him was no, but I didn't say no. And when he invited me, I had not eaten in three days and he said, hey, come and have a meal. We're having spaghetti. So the Italian rose up in me. While I was at this meeting, the man was teaching on denial and I was 14 rows back and he offered Jesus Christ. And what he said was, you need to give your life. And I put my hands over my face and I said, you don't know where I've been and you don't know what I've done. And he answered me. He said, God knows where you've been and he knows what you've done. And today he chooses you. Now, I tell you that to say this, that in my darkest hour, I know now what I did not know then, that God looked down and said, that one's mine. And you may be going through things today and you may think you're so far from God. I was 10,000 miles away, but it was only one step back to the Savior. And he gave me, and I ran to the altar that day. I ran so hard from 14 rows back that I slid into the altar. I literally slid there.
and I laid on my face and I asked Jesus Christ to forgive me, to cleanse me. I repented of everything that I could ever think that I should repent of. And all of a sudden I was born again. And God, now here I was a fortunate one. God delivered me that day from methamphetamines, from alcoholism, and from many other things. I've been honored to go around the world preaching the gospel. I moved here from North Carolina and became an ordained pastor. God blessed me. I was a senior pastor of a church. We opened up seven total recovery programs in the city that I lived in so that we could have a recovery program every night of the week for people that were struggling. Because God is in the business of restoration and resurrection. And so from there, God took me to Kenya where I, I was on a mission field and we opened a recovery program. Imagine that in Nairobi, Kenya that is still going strong this day to the glory of God. I didn't know freedom till the day I met Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. There's a hole in every man's heart, every woman's heart that only our God can fill. Don't pass the opportunity today to meet the King. Meet the resurrected one. He can, he can make things right. Now, life has been tough. It's never going to be easy. But the one thing I know that I am never alone because he never leaves me and he never forsakes me.